we recently hit a rock at high speed. This is probably gonna be the most technical thing I've ever done with an outboard. There's a couple of things here that are making me nervous. I am running into a problem. Fingers crossed. I really hope this works. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. What's going on there, buddy? Well, Jordan's gonna be doing some maintenance on our diesel engine today, so I need to go into our deep storage um, and get our engine oil. Yeah, it looks like we've got at least one big tub of engine oil. Yeah, I made this bag because initially we stored oil up there and I didn't realize it, but these seams will chafe so much against the hole that they'll eventually break open. And for like the first two years of living on Atticus, every once in a while, we one of these would just bust open and there'd be oil all over the floor. So And we wouldn't know why. Yeah, I was like, where is it coming from? <laughs> <laughs> these help protect it. So we haven't had that problem since then. So as Desiree said, I'm doing some engine maintenance today. It is that time of the year. So I'm looking at our operator's maintenance manual and in here, they've got a maintenance schedule. So it's telling you the things that you gotta do and how often you gotta do them. Then I'm comparing that to, we've got a log book here. In this, I write down what maintenance items I do, whether it be the outboard, the diesel engine, even the rigging. And so I'm just sort of comparing that information to what's on the maintenance schedule here to figure out exactly what I'm gonna do today. So the first item on my list was to change the engine oil. friend Jeff here in the marina collects the used oil from all the boats around here and gives it to farmers around here who can use the old oil for all kinds of different stuff. Next I had to change the oil filter and I learned this Ziploc trick not too long ago and it really helps me minimize the amount of oil that I spill. And then I just topped up the engine with new engine oil. Next, I had to change the transmission fluid. I checked the air filter, it looked good. I had to change the secondary fuel filter that's actually on the engine. And this is the first time that we've done that. It was installed really, really tight. And so I had to use a specialized tool that we borrowed from our friend Jeff. Next, I had to change the belt. Uh, it was starting to squeal a little bit. I think it was getting a little bit old. This is the exact belt that needs to replace the old belt and for whatever reason, it doesn't want to go on. So I decided to try completely dismounting the alternator to see if I could get the belt on that way and then reattach the alternator. Next up was inspecting the raw water impeller. Yeah, so you can see here that two of the blades on the impeller are cracked. So, uh, glad I did this. Man, it is hot. <laughs> I'm just sweating buckets. Pro 
Probably the hardest aspect of doing engine maintenance on Atticus is the fact that I have to remove everything from the cockpit lockers in order to access the engine. This also makes doing engine maintenance a weather dependent project, which is a huge bummer because if it starts to rain, I gotta close up the cockpit lockers pretty quick. Next, I wanted to check the sacrificial zinc anode. Oh God. The whole zinc is pretty much completely gone. So it feels like no matter how often I replace these, they're basically completely gone by the time I get to them. That's not good for the engine, so I need to start doing this more often. And next, I wanted to clean the heat exchange tubes and I used a small rod that just pushes all of the particles out of the tubes. And once everything was reassembled, I topped up on coolant. Now, a lesson that I've learned the hard way is that whenever I open up the raw water system and salt water gets on the engine, is to rinse the engine really good with fresh water and then dry it and clean it really well. Most of what I'm doing is I'm tackling regular maintenance items, things that happen every six months, every year. But the other thing I'm doing is to get my eyes on and hands on all these different components that I very rarely see, um, looking for potential problems before they become a big issue. And I just found something that's really important. I'm glad I found. This cable needs to push this lever all the way down, all the way to center line, and all the way up in order to have the transmission go into forward or reverse. And if it doesn't go all the way, then that can really damage the transmission. You can see here that these spacers are actually a little bit loose, and that's because the nuts on these bolts that hold it all together have started to back down a little bit and have gotten a little bit loose. So I'm glad I caught that. I'm just gonna tighten those up, no problem. Um, but that's exactly the kind of thing that I'm really trying to find uh, before it becomes a huge issue. All right, well, I checked all the fluids, oil, transmission fluid, uh, coolant, uh, no leaks, and started her up and she's sounding good. So I think that's gonna be uh, all the maintenance we'll need for a little while. Well, I'm getting ready to get some work done on the computer while Jordan's hacking away at our boat projects. Getting work done in the tropics on a little boat like Atticus uh, can be a little bit hot and sweaty. <laughs> the boat really heats up a lot, so when we're at anchor, we've actually managed it so that we've got our sunshades up, protecting the deck, and then we've got our wind scoop up forward and we're facing into the wind, so the wind is actually funneling right through the cabin. Right now we're in the marina, and it is really, really hot. And that's because the bow of Atticus isn't facing into the wind. So we don't get nearly as much airflow as we usually do when we're out at anchor. But we've got a pretty good system figured out now and it hinges on this really cool fan that I'll show you guys over here. This is the boundless breeze. And what's cool about it is that it's a 12 volt fan and it doesn't take up that much electricity. So when we're at a marina, we pretty much have this going all the time. So at night, we actually hook this up here, but we also have to deal with a lot of mosquitoes and noceums at marinas like this, because we're so close to the mangroves. Um, so another thing that we always have to do when we're at a marina is have our uh, mosquito net up. And so that really inhibits the amount of airflow that can come into Atticus. But this fan is cool because it just sucks the wind through. So that really helps a lot. So in the middle of the day, especially on hot kind of muggy days today, this fan works pretty well set up here. Again, with the mosquitoes though, I do have to limit my airflow again with this mosquito net. Ah, all right, that's a lot better. Time to get back to work. got there captain footloose captain <laughs> thank you i appreciate you calling me by my proper term <laughs> anytime skipper 
<laughs> Last time we were talking about the outboard, we weren't sure exactly what our approach was going to be. And after doing a lot of research, I decided that we are just going to reassemble it with, with new parts. The whole issue here is, comes down to this little guy. So this is what they call a shim. It's basically a spacer and it takes up very, very little space as you can see. And so this is what's going to make it so that these gears match up just freaking perfectly. So if there's a little bit too much space, you add more of these shims. If there's too little space, if they're too tight, you take away the shims. Now, deciding how many shims should be in place is the process that I said takes a lot of time, a lot of knowledge, and specialized tools a lot of the time. But through all of my research, I've found that for the most part, if you're replacing the components that we're replacing and nothing more, you can generally, I've been told the vast majority of the time, use the exact same shims. There's a couple of things here that are making me nervous, and one of them is removing this clutch and putting the new one on. Mm. Everything else is gonna be relatively straightforward, but this is like spring-loaded, so there's a spring in there. Getting this out and then putting the new one on and keeping the spring like the way you want it to be, that's all gonna be interesting. I'm gonna go talk to my friend Jeff, who is the local mechanic here, and ask him about removing this pin from the clutch. Hey, Jeff. What do you know? Do you have a second? I've got a bunch of them. All right. I've got some thirds and fourths here. <laughs> so I want to push this roll pin out. Yep. Put the new clutch on with the new roll pin. Okay. Let me see what we've got in the magic uh, boxes of tricks here. Yeah. We have all these special tools. Mm-hmm. Beautiful little drifts and things. It's coming out the backside. For getting it back in, I would use the vise mm -hmm. and squeeze it in the vise mm -hmm. and get it to come right in. Mm. And making sure that your clutch deal is going the right direction, of course. I feel real stupid if you have it upside down. Okay, so I'm gonna push down. And in she goes. Cleared through, flush. You got the doctor ordered? Man, that's awesome, thanks dude. All right, well, <sighs> Jeff saved the day. The clutch is in the prop shaft and the spring is in place, it's moving freely. I'm hoping that that is the trickiest part of this whole thing. It's like there's a curve with this sort of mechanical stuff or anything that you, there's a skill set that's involved, right? It's like you start off as like super confident for no reason. You're overconfident. You're like, yeah, I could probably make that happen. And then you destroy it. Mm -hmm. And you do that a handful of times until you're so paranoid. Mm -hmm. You're at the bottom of your confidence and you're just like, I can't do anything without completely wrecking it. I feel like I'm at the bottom of that curve. <laughs> I, I know enough to know how likely it is that I'm gonna screw it up. Mm -hmm. And I need to find people like Jeff who have gone through becoming depressed and insecure about it, have become so good that they're actually really confident for good reason. into a problem. 
This is the shifting rod. And so to put it in forward, you bring it up. To go into neutral, you push it down a little bit till it catches. There you go. The problem that I'm experiencing is trying to go into reverse. So I'd have to push it one more notch down and it doesn't want to stay. So I push down, I encounter a dead stop, I let go and it pops back up. I spent the last two hours just taking it apart, looking at it, playing with it, thinking about it. And I'm almost positive that the problem is that when I went over to Jeff's shop that we actually put the clutch on backwards. Jeff asked me, is there, does it need to go on one way or the other? And making sure that your clutch deal is going the right direction, of course. I feel real stupid if you have it upside down. Mm -hmm. I need to disassemble it. I need to take the prop shaft and the clutch back over to Jeff's shop and pretty much just completely redo what I did over there. Okay, here goes the assembly. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I really hope this works. Okay, moment of truth. I'll try the shifting rod. Victory! <laughs> I got it. Okay, so we're all set to test the outboard. I'm really nervous about testing the outboard because I feel like anything could happen. <laughs> but I'm really excited about taking out this dinghy for the first time. I am so stoked. I can't believe that this thing is ours. Like, it looks so nice. I know, it's bizarre. So here we go, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Huh. Sounds really low, doesn't it? Hasn't started in a while. Yeah. Okay, let's test reverse. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, forward. Sounded good. I'm gonna tentatively call that good. You good know? job, bud. I'm proud of you. Thanks. That was cool. I'm, I am kind of proud of myself, but it still could get weird, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The backlash could be not quite right and that could cause problems. We'll keep an eye on it and hope that this was a good job. Let's take this thing for a spin. All right. You're so far room. away, buddy. Where are you? <laughs> I know, can't right? Reach I you. can't even touch. <laughs> what do you want to call this beauty? I don't know. Yeah. One suggestion was the deuce. Yeah. We could go with the deuce. I do. I love how like ironic that is, and the double on top. Yeah, it's like number two, and it alludes to uh, to shit. <laughs> and when we drop it in the water, we could drop a deuce. Yeah, very true. Oh. But I feel like little shit just like rolls off the tongue. Yeah. You know. I don't know. So natural. Let us know what you think. Maybe we should vote like... for the deuce or little shit too. Yeah. Oh, uh, little shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get back. I got more projects to do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. So we wanted to bring up something that, well, it's gonna be kind of a big change on Project Atticus. Over the course of the last you know, couple years since we've been doing weekly episodes, we have been slowly falling behind on all kinds of different stuff. We're constantly behind on boat maintenance and boat projects. 
Uh, we're constantly behind on getting cruising in the right weather season because of those projects. And on our admin work. We're constantly behind on admin work and just <laughs> everything you could imagine because we spend so much time on these episodes. And we've just gotten to a point where we've realized that something has got to change. We decided that we didn't want to spend less time on episodes, so we're going to try making fewer episodes. So for the time being, we're going to run a little experiment and try producing two episodes every month. So one episode every other week. Uh, we'll also be doing one live stream every month as well as a patron only live stream every month. And so if you're a patron, then every Thursday you get some kind of Project Atticus content. If you're not a patron, then there's gonna be one Thursday every month where you don't get to see our beautiful faces. I'm sorry about that. But otherwise, we hope you enjoy the quality of the videos and that the quality is obviously improving all of the time because that's our primary goal. And uh, yeah, we hope you guys are happy with what we're doing. So we'll see you next Thursday on Atticus Live. We'll be hosting a live stream right here. See you then.